Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Wisdom Wednesdays. I am Patrina Wisdom, your Fresh Start Specialist and CEO Founder of Mindful Living, Inc., and I'm so excited to be with you today. It has been rainy, stormy, I should say, here in San Diego, and it's uh, just really relaxing. I've got my fire going. It's a little bit chilly, so, you know, I put on my sweater, and i um, just really been having a lot of fun with the change in weather, even though I miss my sunshine. <laughs> Anyways, today we're going to talk about awakening your five-year-old self. Oftentimes, we get so caught up with work, our careers, our kids, our relationships, and all of the stress and challenges that sometimes consume our lives that we forget to play, to have fun, to really tap in to that five-year-old that we used to be who explored and was curious and playful. So today we're going to talk about five powerful tips for awakening your five-year-old self so that you too can incorporate a little bit more passion and liveliness and fun into your life. So our first tip for today is just to create space for play. When you were five years old, playtime was like the most important thing in your life, right? Then you got older and more serious and you've forgotten what it was like to be in a natural state of bliss. See, there's power and there is power in creative play right? So there's power in creativity. There's power in just the energy of being blissful, joyful, happy, feeling good, laughing, moving, dancing. These are all things that really unlock the, the true power that we have to manifest and to create wonderful things in our lives. And I really feel like a lot of people overlook that very simple fact. So tip number one is to create space for play. Schedule it in, make time for it. You know, we work Monday through Friday on the grind, taking care of what we have to do. So I want to encourage you to definitely, even if it's only for a couple of hours, create space on the weekends or in the evenings to do the things that you want to do. Powerful tip number two is don't be afraid of no. <laughs> <laughs> Let the desires of your heart be known. I mean, as a child, you didn't take things personally. You would ask your parents or you would ask someone for something. And if the answer was no, you would ask again and again and again, usually until they said yes, right? So what happened? What happened to that persistent, fearless little boy or girl? I want to encourage you to take back your throat chakra, to really own your voice and use the gift that you've been blessed with because it is a gift. Not everyone has the power to communicate verbally, so use it. Really harness that power to create everything that you want in your life, right? Communication is key, whether it's coworker, whether it's with your boss, whether it's with your lover. You have to learn how to express your desires, your needs. If you can't express your needs and your desires, then how do you expect to get your needs met? And our last powerful tip for this week is if you fall, get back up. <laughs> As a child, you were so resilient. You didn't fall once and then refuse to get back up and walk again, right? I mean, you got back up, you tried it, you fell some more, you got some bumps, you got some bruises, and along the way, you learned how to walk. Well, it's the same thing in our lives. I mean, let's say that you're learning a new job. You don't make one mistake and go, that's it, I quit, right? So why do we do that in our relationships, in our friendships, in our uh, romantic relationships? You know, we try something, we get hurt once, and then, you know, the next time something comes along, we, we're very hesitant. We have our wall up. We don't want to try. We're scared. Get back on the horse. Not every ride is going to be the same. <laughs> so why is it that as adults we get hurt and we just spend the rest of our, our lives tiptoeing so that we don't get hurt again? Well, I mean, the answer is just flat out fear. So what is it going to take for you to move through that fear and really reap the benefits on what's on the other side of that fear? Because again, 
not every experience is going to be the same. If you expect the same, you will get the same. But if you're optimistic, if you're open, and if you really concentrate on feeling what it would be like to manifest something different, then you absolutely will. And that wraps up our Wisdom Wednesdays for today. Three powerful tips for awakening your five-year-old self. Um, you know, I've been having a blast. I always create time to entertain my five-year-old self and, and let her be alive and free and giggle and laugh and dance and be silly. And I really don't care what people think. I don't know if that's good or bad sometimes, but I don't care what people think about me. I have to live in my child space because it's what makes me happy. So I've been preparing for my sacred self care retreat this weekend where I have a group of beautiful ladies coming where I'm going to create this wonderful sacred space for them to reconnect with their five-year-old child. And I am so very excited. So if you haven't already registered for my sacred self-care retreat this weekend, March 8th and 9th, then do so at the link below, patrinawisdom.com forward slash sacred self care. I'd love to have you. I still have a couple spaces left that I'm holding for you specifically if you're meant to be there. I love you. I will see you next week right here, same time, same place on your Wisdom Wednesdays. Namaste.